This past few months, we've been living through an extraordinary pandemic provoked by a mysterious virus from the animal world. Nobody really knows where it came from. I'm setting out to investigate what we do and don't know about this coronavirus and asking if we should start preparing for the next pandemic. The first question is whether this virus really is 100% natural in origin, and we've come to find some answers here at the Swiss Institute of Virology and Immunology. This facility near Bern was one of the first places in Europe to receive a live sample of the new coronavirus, officially called SARS-CoV-2. Within a few weeks, they'd managed to make an artificial copy of it. Maybe uh, looks maybe a little bit strange, so in this nice uh, environment. Uh, but yes, uh, in here we have the uh, SARS cloned, the cloned SARS virus. That's right. So this is uh, the laboratory. The clone is just as potentially deadly as the real virus, so we can't go any further. Clones are made here because they're useful in developing vaccines for new viruses, and these experts used an innovative technique to make a copy of SARS-CoV-2 in just a matter of weeks. The fact that you made a cloned virus here, does that not allow you to also draw the conclusion that perhaps the original virus was made in a laboratory like this? Well, there have been some speculations about that, that it coming from the Wuhan uh, laboratory, a, a laboratory which is also involved in SARS uh, research. But I think these are just speculations and at the moment there's no solid proof that this uh, really has been the case. So where does Professor Griot think the virus that causes COVID-19 comes from? Most likely uh, the uh, virus came from bats uh, and then has been in a reservoir or in an intermediate host. The intermediate host is, we don't know which, which animal that was. And then it was passed on to uh, humans. Bats were the source of the first SARS virus in 2002 and MERS in 2012. Now these flying mammals are suspect number one in the search for the origins of SARS-CoV-2. Bats, like these in France, have uniquely robust immune systems that allow them to tolerate viruses that can easily kill other animals. The thing that is really extraordinary is that for the majority of them, they are asymptomatic. They will not develop symptoms. I'm thinking of rabies, I'm thinking of SARS-CoV-2, I'm thinking of Ebola, Nipah, Hendra and MERS. Well, in fact, it's circulating, but it seems that it doesn't cause any damage to the bats. It has no visible impact. Scientists believe a virus similar to SARS-CoV-2 has existed in bat populations for decades. So the emergence of this new coronavirus probably came from sustained contact between quite different species in one form or another. At some point in the exchanges that take place, they may be the right genetic combination, both of the virus and for the human species. And at that point, the transmission takes place. The emergence doesn't just happen just like that, in a click of the fingers. It's a long process, and usually the cause is the human race. At the Museum of Natural History in Paris, researcher Alexandre Asenard is working to understand the role of humans and other animals in the emergence of SARS-CoV-2. Some genes in the new virus link it to pangolins, an illegally trafficked animal used in Chinese medicine. The question is, how did these pangolins manage to catch this virus? That's the real question. Keeping in mind that these viruses have only been identified in captive animals, seized by Chinese customs, and for the moment, no virus like this has been identified in pangolins in the wild. This is where the role of people comes under scrutiny. It may be that pangolins smuggled from Southeast Asia were infected by bats in a Chinese market. However, it's not as simple as that. The virus found in pangolins is only a 90% match to the human one. Getting to a 100% match would require about 50 years of evolutionary change. So the mystery deepens. What we are now looking for is a virus that is very close to the human virus in a wild animal. What is weird, once again, is that everything converges towards Southeast Asia, in the extreme south of China, not Wuhan. And clearly, the role of the traffic of live animals looks pretty clear to me. 
Alors, soit c'est Either it came from a live animal sold in a market, or at least kept in captivity, or it passed through a laboratory. But in any case, the origin is really the traffic of live animals. However, this new coronavirus made the leap from animals to humans. You have to wonder, what does it say about our relationship with the animal world? And what risks are there out there in the future? Nobody knows animals better than veterinarians like Michel Pépin from the Vet Agro Soup College near Lyon in France. He stresses that coronaviruses, often from bats, are literally everywhere. Practically every animal species is home to a coronavirus. We know they're in cats, in dogs, in pigs, in cattle, in horses, in terms of what concerns us. Finding the origin of SARS-CoV-2 is important because the number of viruses leaping the species barrier has risen. Why is that? In this case in China, it appears to be hunting, trafficking and selling wild animals. But there are several other factors too. Climate change has an impact, but it's not necessarily the main factor in the emergence of infectious diseases. It's really all about the conditions, agricultural practices, irrigation, deforestation, contact with wildlife. Ecotourism, the fact that tourists want to get as close to nature as possible, means that at some point we do come into contact with viruses, which until that point were confined to the forests with wild fauna. So, today we're battling SARS-CoV-2, but within the next few decades, these scientists could be investigating its future cousins, SARS-CoV-3, SARS-CoV-4, and so on. I think there are uh, an awful lot of other viruses out there which all of a sudden can pop up, and then we have it also in the human uh, population. Deadly viruses? 70% of the emerging, emerging diseases have been jumping from animals to the human beings, and an awful lot of them have been major or show major impact on the human beings. So, yes, some of them are really deadly viruses. The way to tackle emerging diseases is testing. Scientists say they need to sample more viruses in more animals to build a more complete picture and be better prepared for the next pandemic.